they turn off my VS code pets because it could be distracting. Uh, maybe people will comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then I remember I saw that we had a question a while back about why, if we go back to like the chat controller, why the request will always send the proposed plan back, but then also like a user canceled the plan. Um, and all right, so we're switching over to VS Code because my browser is no longer loading. But like I was trying to say earlier, whenever the plan comes back like if the user approves or rejects it the plan is treated just as a regular user message so the content is either yes approved or no cancel and then that will just get saved in chat history like any other message and the proposed plan will always come back in the request context so the context variables but because it always comes back, we can't really, we don't really have a good way on like knowing whether it was approved or canceled. Um, so we'll check for this other context variable, which is user canceled plan. And like I said earlier, if this is in the context variables, then we just like bail out of the chatbot generation completely and just return a static response. But if it is, um, if the plan does come back as approved, it will just go to that flow that I just explained. Um, but we also, whenever this happens, we also want to update the bot message that, that was previously saved in chat history um, to like update the state of the plan, just so we have a record of whether it was approved or saved. Yeah. Um, so let's go back here. So after that's the acquire external information skill. So that's the third pass to the LOM. And after that's done, um, it will, like I said, if the plan is su suggested, we just like fail at this point and send back to the user for approval. Um, but if a plan is not suggested or a plan was executed and we got the information from there, it will just be concatenated to the prompt at this point. And then we move on to the next step, which is querying relevant semantic memories. So this next skill invokes the semantic chat memory skill, which basically just creates the chat memories from the memory store. And memory is important because they have a higher information density given the same number of tokens. So this is different than like the chat history because the tokens are calculated per message, whereas um, chat memories kind of condense multiple messages into a semantic meaning. So they contain more information for like the same token limit, basically. And they can provide the LOM context beyond just the last end messages considered in the chat history. That's good, yeah. So uh, it sounds like it makes use of some sort of summarization of the chat messages and then store them in a memory store that then yeah. gets retrieved later. Yeah, so what it does is it takes like um, the chat history, like so many up to like the context limit, and then it will generate an embedding based on that. And like th that embedding is what's saved in the memory. And um, whenever it does that for like every message that comes through, if there's already like a memory and embedding that has a high similarity value to whatever is being like generated for that chat, chat message, it won't save it, but otherwise it will save it. And then it will just like pull it based on like the, con uh, the token limit that's left. And then similarly, it does the same with document memories. So document memories are created using the document memory skill and document memories, they come from uploaded memories. So they're different than the semantic memories, which are calculated on, based on the chat history. Document memories can be uploaded from the Copilot chat UI, and then it's an embedding is generated for that document, and then it's stored, and it is created here for use for other chat messages or other response. Um, the documents, I believe, right now can be PDFs or txt documents and they have their own controller which handles like the document upload and management 
And then with the remaining token limit, we have, we fill it in with like the chat history. So just like the raw messages that come from the ch chat message store. And once that's all said and that done, it will set everything that is just calculated in this function. And it will make a call to the kernel to get the chatbot response. And that's the prompt. That's the whole prompt. We can take a look at it in a bit. And because you can see it from the Copilot chat UI, uh, it will send that to the LLM. So that's the final big prompt that's sent to the LLM. And then the LLM will come back with a single bot response. And that's what's returned to the UI. And for just like debugging or like um, knowledge purposes, we also save the prompt to the chat result that's sent back to the UI and then that that's shown. So you can kind of see the thought process that it's taking. Um, let me share my screen again so we can go back to the actual co-pilot chat. So like I said, like this, this response was generated by the LOM and you can see the entire prompt that was put together by that chat skill. So this is like the initial prompt. This is the static part where we just tell it that like an intelligent AI bot and we expect it to respond as a bot. And then this is the audience. This comes from the audience generation. And this is the user intent that was calculated based on the user input and chat history. And then these, this is where the memories were created. And then this related start related end section is the formatted output of the planner. So you can see like the planner was executed here and this plan was executed and this was the result of that plan. And then with the remaining token limit, it added this these like three messages from the chat history. And mm -hmm. then the single response is just kind of this preamble that we put. So the bot knows to just give one response back. Otherwise it tries to like add different like prefixes or be like, this is one possible response that you could have. And then the actual response. So we give it a preamble. So it doesn't give us one. Awesome. Well, in our last couple minutes, if you want to hop off of uh, sharing your screen. Great. Well, thank you so much for this walkthrough. Uh, I guess uh, last question to you is what are some lessons or gotchas or things that you've personally experienced? Uh, building an AI app using, you know, Copilot Chat or with Copilot Chat. Yeah, so I think like one of the things that we struggled with because I worked a lot on like the front end, the web app part of it was kind of like aligning the state between the two and making sure that we were saving like the right data um, and trying to figure out like because we're so hard coded to like code exactly like what we want the application to do. Like with LLMs, it can do a lot of the work for you. So kind of like transitioning that mindset into like, oh, like what can I use semantic kernel to do? And you can see all the different hops that we made to the LLM to construct that prompt. So like really fleshing out like the chat skill and um, getting the bot to do the bulk of the work for us was um, like trying to find like that fine line, that balance there. And we recently introduced multi-user chat to Copilot chat application. So that introduced a whole new like question of how we're going to manage state between multiple users. Like, will the bot respond to every message or should it like kind of bail out if it sees a new message come in and how we like handle that like broadcasting interaction there. So I would say like that was like basically like how can we generate the most efficient bot response, but also like the most intelligent one. And that's something we're still trying to like narrow down. Like we're still trying to like fine tune the chat skill because sometimes it can take longer than expected to just send like a simple response back. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> it's a it's an emerging stack really of building these mm -hmm. sort of uh, AI apps and you're, you're very much on the grounds uh, working to, to see how it works. Mm -hmm. and. I'm sure it's transforming the way you're developing, or at least you have to rethink a lot of problems. So, that's... yeah, I, um, I also would say that it's just like um, because plugins can be enabled for literally anything, and that's like the beauty of Copilot Chat and like Semantic Kernel is like you can add functionality on top of the LOM. But like one issue we're trying to solve right now is like how can we make like meaningful content 
out of the responses that we're getting because um, I mentioned earlier like the API responses can get really 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 big so one way that we chose to do it was just basically like parsing it down to like the top amount of tokens from the API response or like actually configuring the different classes for the schemas we expect to get back yeah yeah cool well uh <laughs> if someone wants to get involved or or contribute uh what are some ways that that they can do so yeah, so it's an open source project, Semantic Kernel. So you can just go to github.com slash Microsoft slash Semantic Kernel and feel free to open up your own pull request if you have any ideas of like code you want to push or like features you want to build. Um, you can also just open up an issue um, with like a feature request or like a bug that you found or just like functionality that you don't expect and the team will look into it and like work it through. But we encourage community PRs. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Well, with that, thank you so much, Teresa, again for, for the time. And yeah, find us on Discord, find us on GitHub, and you know, feel free to contribute more to the Semantic Kernel community. So again, I'm Alex. It's Teresa signing out. Oh, thanks, Alex. Bye, guys. Bye.